And I love fake radio. That's the only thing to do it. Like, there's nobody. Fake radio. And I said it. Nicki Minaj, Nicki Lewinsky, Dirty Money, Young Money, The Mistress. Yeah, 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 yeah. We are back. Spate Radio. I got my brother, Maurice McFadden, in the building, author. Um, yo, so uh, introduce yourself. Tell them a little bit about you. Yo, uh, it's Maurice McFadden, man. Um, I'm from the Bronx, the South Bronx, and grew up mostly in the North Bronx. Um, did music. I don't know, man. Did music in junior high school, high school, then went into you know, the rap thing and worked for Vibe Magazine for about 10 years, man. And, um, you know, started my own little label. It didn't do all that well, but, you know, um, and then probably like 2011, a friend of mine hit me up from California and was like, hey, I turned your, some poetry in of yours into a book company. I'm like, I don't want to write no books. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's how the whole book thing came out. I never wanted to be a writer. Okay. Um, she turned it into a publishing company, and I'm like, oh, and, and it took me three years to decide to even write, a, you know, to even do it, man. Okay. Okay. So your um your first book was a children's book. What was your first? No, book? my first book came out of 2011. It was called Strength Like Yours. Um, it was a poetry book, and um, I wrote it Strength Like Yours because I, it was about my mom's because I, you know, I never met most of. Them, most of our mothers, black women, you know, they're strong women. They hold up the family, man. So I wrote that book dedicated to her because I never found strength like, you know, hers. But I bought that out in 2011 under a publishing company called um, Published America, which they was a ripoff. So they, people got to be careful with these publishing companies, man. Um, I got in for free, but I had to pay to get out of my deal. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, so then I went to another company called Ingram Sparks, and I and I bought that. I mean, not Ingram Sparks. I went to a joint called Balboa Press, okay. which is a, um, a publishing company out of L.A. They're a subsidiary of Hay House, Lucille Hay, and she does inspirational books. So that book came out in 2012. Um, so that was my first book, a poetry book, Strength Like Yours. Okay. Okay, so how did the uh, children's book come about? The children's book came about in 2009. Um, I adopted my dog. Um, but like I said, I, I wrote the other book in 2011 and 12. 2009, I adopted my dog. So what I was just doing, man, I was just snapping pictures of him, you know, doing things. And I was putting the book together. And I, I went and bought one of those big pads. And I just pasted pictures of what mm -hmm. the scenes I thought I wanted to do. And man, it took me from that time, 2009, um, just just posting pictures, doing you know, pasting everything together, and um, and I bought the book out in 2021. You know, that's a long time though. Um, like oh. I said, because I wasn't thinking about a children's book at that time. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. So, um, can you what what was the book that came out after the children's book? The book, well, I tell you, during that time, 2021, I dropped three books. Okay. So I dropped the children's book. I dropped the children's coloring book of the same thing of the book. Um, and then my other book was um, uh, Brother's Testimony, uh, which is my testimony about my life. You okay. know what I mean? You know, everything that was going on in my life, um, the alcoholism, um, the disrespect of women that I was doing and um, trying to find God and all that. So all three of those books came out in like in within a, of, like I said, in a year, year of each other, all in one year, I bought those three books out. Okay. All right. So that sounds, um, so what made you put yourself out there like that when it came to like your personal feelings and personal things that you were going through? Um, because when I bought out my first book, man, I, um, I met a lot of people. I used to run ads in a newspaper mm -hmm. and people would come up to me and say, Hey, I saw that book title and I would run, I would run poems in short poems. In, and a lady was like, yo, Hey, um, I used to be an alcoholic. That poem helped me out. So I didn't know how much I was helping people. You know, I was just expressing my feelings. I was expressing my feelings about suicide and taking my life and doing things like that. 
And um, like I said, people was responding to me like, yo, that's me. You know what I'm saying? Or I had people calling me when they was drinking, was like, yo, I need a copy of that book, man. I need something to get me through the day, Wh- which was crazy, man, because I never thought of me as being an inspiration to nobody. You know what I'm saying? I was yeah. just writing down what I felt about me. Yeah. Know? Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. When you could be an inspiration to someone, when you can change their life, that's something that's important, man, because sometimes people don't have nobody to reach out to. And when they can grab a book, they can, it feels like they, they're talking to someone, you know, that they can relate to. Right, right. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, a brother's testimony, man, is too, man. You know, like I found God again because God did a lot of things for me. Um, you know, my mom's passed away six years ago. So during that time, I was kind of lost. Like, yo, where am I going to go? You know, I was so used to coming back home to the Bronx all the time. And then, you know, that, that foundation in that home right there on 223rd Street, all that was gone. You know what I'm saying? That's all I knew. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. when that was gone, man, I was lost, bro. You know what I'm saying? I moved to Virginia. You know, then I left Virginia. I moved to North Carolina. I left North Carolina, moved to South Carolina. You wow. know what I'm saying? So I didn't, you know, I was, I just was moving and shaking and I didn't know what I want to do. But God was putting me in position to do a lot of things, man. So, he, I mean, he was putting me in the position of where he wanted me to be as a man, a father, a friend, a brother, sister, you know what I'm saying? Because I had, you know, with my drinking and things, man, I, you know, I, I did some crazy things, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. I, I, and, and I can't, you know, when you're drinking, you know, one of your steps is like, you know, you got to give, you know, give forgiveness and ask people for forgiveness. But there's people that won't forgive me. There's nothing I can do about that. All I can do is apologize. But that's just my testimony about how God saved my life. And it's crazy because when I was out in the world, I was like, yo, I ain't never going to be that type of person telling nobody about God. But, yo, it's easy to talk about it, bro. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Dude? Yeah. Let me tell you something, man. I remember when when um I got my house. Dude, I was sitting on the stairs crying. And a friend of mine was like, well, why are you crying? I'm like, yo, my credit was shot. Wow. Dude, I was able to clean my credit up in six months, which is impossible sometimes. Yeah. It's, well, yeah. They, they say it's impossible. Mm-hmm. But... Clean my credit up from January to July, man. I was closing on my house in July, bro. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's only that. Yeah. I ain't had yeah. nothing to do with that. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's amazing, man. That's, and that and that, that's Again, that's an inspiration, too, because a lot of people have credit issues and they think it's over. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They think it's a wrap for them. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, you just, you know, God just put me in a position just to sit and wait, man. And, th- and then while I was sitting in, I got the house, I was sitting and waiting. That's when I, I was like, yo, I'm going to drop these three books now. Yeah. You know, I, I was in, I was in the right frame of mind. I was in the right space. I got a new house. You know what I'm saying? I was even to go on the car dealership, buy a car, no credit. That's great. That's amazing. Got out of there with the car. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo, this is only God. Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That's so that's true. the same testimonies I tell in my books, man. You know what I'm saying. And then just the community of the people I've met, you know, from the time that I've been writing to now, you know, it's been a good community all over the country. That's what's up, man. That's I'm glad to hear. I'm glad that you that it sounds like you're getting some support because it's being a black author is is rare. And on on top of that, there's sometimes there aren't enough resources for for the, for black authors to back black authors to be successful you know well it, it, it's it's hard man it's hard because and it's funny man because most of the black authors i know and i don't know what it is about male authors i don't have that many male author friends wow like i maybe wow. have maybe two that i constantly stay in touch with you know i got one, two brothers from atlanta that we close but i run into these brothers in tennessee in, in, in Atlanta or, or, you know, wherever we doing book signings, man. So it's crazy. But I know a lot of female um, um, authors from across the country that I do podcasts with and I do different things with, man. So um, that's definitely a blessing, man. But no, it's not easy. Um, right now, the, 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 the you know, the, the black authors network is just saturated. Wow. So and that makes- brings me that brings me to the next thing. What? What are the challenges that you go through as a black author? What are some of the challenges? Well, it's 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 crazy because when I got doing from music to doing this, it's the same thing. 
Really? I remember how we used to run to the store and yo know, get get put our records on consignment. You remember that? You know, put yeah. my record on consignment if it sells, it's good. Yeah. We used to be able to do that with books, man. Go to mm-hmm. a store, mom and pop store, and get consignment. They not doing that no more. Wow. So now, if you're, and that's why I had to do, you know, you got Amazon publishing, which you could do Amazon, print your own books up. They got something called a, a KDP deal, mm-hmm. um, which you print your own stuff up, all that. But then you got what they call a hybrid, hybrid. Now, hybrid, you have to pay somebody to put your book together. You do your artwork and send it to them, but you pay them. And that's what I did. And they put their imprint on your book, but they don't own the rights to it, but they don't do nothing for you either. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying? So you got to get out there and push it. Now, the only thing about that compared to the Amazon deal with me going through a hybrid, I have a distribution deal through Ingram Sparks. Okay. And you need, and, and Ingram Sparks is the only way that you can get your stuff into a Barnes and Noble, Books of Me, or anything. You got to be with. That's the first thing they're gonna ask you. Are, you: are you with Ingram Sparks? If you're not with that, they're not even paying you no mind. Yeah, yeah. So it's you know, kind of like similar anybody. to it's similar to the music game. Like if yeah, you don't have, if you don't get with the right company and they don't put up no money, you got to do everything yourself. Right, you got to do everything yourself. Mm. Yeah, but like I said, with the, with the Amazon thing, it's cool. But we, you just on Amazon, you're not on any other formats. Mm. You know, so that's the hard part with me. I'm on all formats. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm you know I'm on the books a million, the Barnes and Nobles. You know, you want those. You want to be out there. I mean, even though Amazon is the biggest, um, but you want to be on those other you know those other markets, man. So that's the big challenge, man, of getting your books out there. But I, I mean, I'm just like the music business too. Yeah. I, I, yo, I hit, I hit the ground running, bro. Yeah. You know, you know, year before last, man, my three books dropped. Dude, from April to January, I was on the road. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I was in, I was in Tennessee, Mississippi, Alabama. You know what I'm saying? Doing, di- doing different outlets. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was going to markets where I didn't think people were going to buy my books, especially wow. white people. I didn't think they would buy my books, but. The reason I wrote the blessings off of dogs too, man, is because I, I love my dog Oliver, and people in general across the board love animals. Yeah, exactly. It's true. They love. And you got people going to jail for doing stuff to animals. Leave your dog outside too long if you want to. You might do six months. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yep. Yep. So that was the reason for that, and it's crazy too because I just had a um an agent from L.A. call me. I don't know if it's legit or not, and I haven't researched it too much but they just called me so i'm like yo we want to put that book back out with a major company and all this and this and that um mm. we see what happens if it's real or not you know what i'm saying yeah um, if they true to the game for the children's book because i'll do that i mean the poetry stuff is not a big seller but i think the 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 kids book talking about a dog is it's it, it'll go through the roof you know what i'm saying so yeah most I'm still, definitely you know so i'm still pushing i'm you know i'm out, I'm out there in Texas and anywhere there's a book, you know, what I do, what I do at the beginning of the year, man, I give me a calendar of every state that's doing a, um, a book festival. Uh-huh. And then I pick which ones I go to. But, you know, the only thing about that, too, these tables are getting expensive. Uh huh. You know, tables are not fifty, sixty dollars no more. You know, you, you, you're paying one hundred and seventy five to three hundred and fifty dollars for a table. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I wanted, I wanted to do Harlem, man. You know, do the thing in Harlem, man. You know, doing that time, man. But yo, that tables is three, three hundred, five hundred dollars. So you got to figure if you have that money to spend, but you got to look at your return might not be the same. And that's yeah. the only thing when you're doing those things. You might spend one hundred and fifty, one hundred seventy five dollars on the table. You might sell two or three books, but you might meet some people that can get you in certain, you know, certain areas of where you're trying to go. Like I did Tennessee, a big children's thing in Tennessee. I sold a lot of books there, but I met people with my book is in comic book stores. They was like, yo, we want to put your joint in the comic book stores and all that. So those things help out, you know? Okay. Okay. That's good though. That's good. Um, at, at least you have some way to get your books out there. You know, at least, uh, even if it's on a, a smaller level, um, you, you got to grind it. You know what I mean? You know, also too, man. I got you know, I got two other books. One book's just dropped in June, and one dropped when the other one dropped in April. 
where I did a collaboration from a sister from South Carolina. She had, you know, she's been, she, she gets people on um, Instagram or web and she asked, yo, you want to contribute to this book, three or four poems and you do it. So we did that in April, you know, we bought out a book um, called 40 Shades of Red, which is this 40 different poets um, from across the country. Okay. United States, United States and Nigeria. Wow. And 40, now we, 40 different poets? 40 different poets from across the country. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And, yeah. and that's available on Amazon? That's available on Amazon. Yeah. 40 Shades of Red. Um, love. So that, that one's dope. And now we just, July, June 1st, we just dropped me and eight other brothers with the same sister. She, um, she put us together and we brought out this book called Kings You Are Not Forgotten. Okay. And that book is catered to giving inspiration and hope to brothers that's in the uh, penal system in the penitentiary. Okay. Um, you know, but the book, it does more than just the poetry and give hope. You know, we break down the um, uh, brothers being incarcerated for years, man, that's been wrongly accused and they're okay. still doing time. And, and, stuff. and, we, and we talk about the politics of, you know, the corruption and the prison systems and all of that. Um, okay. So we we pushing this big. Um, the only thing about this for people to get this, we are trying to get people that have people in the prison system to order off off of Amazon, because that's the only way they can get the book in the prison systems. So wow. they have to order off of Amazon. So definitely, Kings, you are not forgotten. And like I said, that's a big book that I'm pushing right now, um, because that's definitely going to inspire people. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how many people have people that's incarcerated or in prison. Um, I have family members and uh, uh, most of us at least have one person that might be old friend or something like that. But uh, it's a good read, man. Like I said, to give them hope and, and also just check out what's happening in the country, man, um, with um, with people being in prison, man. We see it every day on the TV. Yeah. You know, 20, 30 years, they get let out and they didn't do the crime. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. That's crazy. So we, and, you know, also this is, you know, we raising money for this to, you know, for, for lawyers and advocates to help these people to get out of jail, you know, to yeah. fight their cases, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and a lot of brothers went to jail for marijuana and now it's legal. Yeah. So that too, that's crazy too. I had a friend who did a lot of time, like eight, eight like some 17, 18 years for marijuana. And then like now they, they're selling it on in, in, in the mall. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy though, but you just gotta find out the laws though. Yeah, yeah. you know that's the problem because every state is different. Yeah, every state is different, so you just have to find out. You know, everybody's like, "Well, yo, what if I do this? What if I do that?" Look, you gotta check the laws and see what happens though, because you don't want to be, you know, burning no spliff in a police roadblock. But you talking about, yo, it's legal. Yeah, it might not be legal there. You know what I'm saying? A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Have you ever spoke at a prison? You know what, man? I I I, I haven't spoke at a prison, but it's, it's funny, man. When I was in North Carolina, Charlotte, I was doing prison ministry. Mm -hmm. So I got background checked by South Carolina and North Carolina. But before that happened, um, you know, I just you know I just transferred out here to um, Texas in December. So I haven't had that opportunity. Uh, but that's something that's definitely on my plate to continue doing the prison ministry that I started in North Carolina, and South Carolina. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. That's what's yeah. up. Um, so, like, what what type of advice? I'm sure that I'm going to get a couple of people that are trying to do what you do. They're trying to write books. They're trying to get their books out there. What sort of advice would you give to some some young people that are trying to be authors? First thing is just like the music business, man. Copyright it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Copyright it. Because you'll have a whole lot. Of, I had people that be like, oh. I ran into Joe and Joe or somebody on Instagram. They said, send me his book. They send the book so they can read it. Mm -hmm. People stealing people's stuff, bro. Wow. So you got to make sure you copyright your stuff first. And copywriting is easy now. Mm -hmm. So easy now. You could put your whole book on, 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 do it online because online is cheaper now. I don't know yeah. if you've dealt with copywriting in a couple of years, but if you mail it in, it's $175. If you do it on the computer, it's $65. Okay. And it's the same way. Just upload your stuff, do it on the computer. That's the first way. And then you got to look at your finances. You know, your finances might be better to go with the the um, Amazon um, and to do it that way. The only thing about that, you have to find somebody that can you can work with you that can put your book together, um, edit it, 
and get your cover made, you know, um, and that's the cheapest way. Now, if you want to go the hybrid hybrid route, which is, you know, picking a company to put your stuff together, um, I deal with a company out in Atlanta, which is a great company, uh, but it's going to cost you some money, you know, anywhere from $2,500 to $4,000. Okay. So, like I said, that's the cheapest way to go to Amazon, where a lot of people do that. But you just got to make sure that you, you know, you're making sure your spelling's right and all that. The worst thing you could do as a author is have misspelled words and yeah. get review get reviews dude i got reviews on my first book because i i, I didn't edit it great and yo they they tore me a new butthole bro they killed they killed you they, huh but the, the only thing about that they did that right but at the end of it he said yo even though with the misspelling and all that it's, it's definitely a book you want to read so that helped me a lot but I made sure now that I, you know, and now computers are different now. Computers are so different now. If you got a computer, it'll 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 spell check for you yourself, so you can't go wrong with it. Yeah, yeah, can't it's go a lot wrong easier now. Yeah. yeah, you know, than you know back in the days what we did, man. But um, yeah, that's your first thing, copyright. That's your first thing. You know, put your ideas on paper. Um, because I don't I don't write conventionally. Even when I did the kids' book, I didn't have any. I take pictures of my dog or, or, or I take pictures out of magazines or just pull and I get me a big old pad and I start placing first page, second page. And then I start thinking about what I want to write. You know what I'm saying? Uh, with my, my poetry stuff, I don't write like that. I might be working, write something down. I might be in the kitchen cooking, write something down. And I might take all them pages, like, you know, just like music, put them together. You got a song. Now I got, I got a whole poem now. Yeah. Yeah. You know I was just so, going to ask you about your process. When it yes. comes to writing, like how do you get motivated and, and how where do the ideas come from? Um, I mean, that's how I get motivated. And just and just reading, man. Just reading. You know, I mean, the, the best thing is the same thing that we did. I don't know if these kids are doing this now, but you remember when we was going to school, man, we had to do the um what was that thing on Sunday? Current event. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You gotta read, you got to read and see what's going on in the world. You know, you gotta expand your mind to what's going on. I mean, I get a lot of my stuff that's religious stuff is just going to church and read and looking at scriptures and seeing how those scriptures pertain to our lives and what's going on into the world right now. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Because it's real. You know what I'm saying? I go to church, I can relate more with a pastor who can relate to me and the street things and what's going on compared to a pastor that's just reading biblical. Yeah. You know, if you don't know the Bible, you don't you, you lost. Yeah. You yeah. know, but if you if you can put that in what we're doing right now in the world, then people can understand it more. Yeah. So um yeah, that's that's my whole process, man. You know, just putting it together. Like I said, I'm not that type of person just right, 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 right. I, I you know, I'll take a little bit here. I might find a title. I might have a title first, or I might find words and find a title later. Mm -hmm. So it's just different about you know what I'm doing. Okay. Are there any writers that uh, you might recommend or anybody that inspires you? Um, it's crazy, man. I, I, I jumped into this dude, man. And, and yo, he's from the 1800s. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. oh, um, 1800s? His is, uh, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a dude by the name of Carlo Ka Gibron. Wow. Crazy. I don't know how I came up on him. I knew this this chick, man, in Virginia, man. And she, 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 she gave me this little, it was a little book. And he's just doing poetry. And he's like the 1800s. And I'm like, yo, I can relate to this, man. You know, this Carlo <laughs> it, it was crazy, man, because, um, I mean, it, it was a little difficult c compared to the way I write, but I could understand it, though. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So then you got, you know, you got the people like um, Nikki Finney, which is, um, she's, a, she's a professor mm -hmm. in Kentucky, but her peoples is from South Carolina, where my peoples is from. So I met her, but she got her name from um, uh, Nikki Giovanni. Okay. Um, well, she's an inspiration to me because I used to do stuff with her a lot in Virginia. She's a professor at um in Blacksburg, Virginia. You okay. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, man. So I mean, so just a lot of different people, man. I mean, just different people that I run into every day. I mean, I love seeing the young people. I got a young sister out here in in in, in um Waco, Texas, man. She's off the chain, man. Tony, um, she goes by the name of Tony B. Shelton, man. She she's fire, man. She went to Baylor University. Um, but yo, she's fire with what she's doing, man. She's dropped three books, you know, little poetry books. It's not big stuff, but she's dropping it and she's have a foundation out here. You know, she's on the TV, you know, she's pushing it, pushing it every day, man. 
So um yeah, I, I mean I like I like seeing this new these new kids, man. And even with the um um going to um poetry slams and stuff like that. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Because I started off like that a little bit, you know, with the rapping and, and combining my stuff with poetry, man. But just to watch these kids, man, um, just spit off the top of the head is it, just crazy. It's just yeah, crazy. Yeah. You know, they they live for it. You yeah. Know? That's what's up, man. That's what's up. So do you have um any events or anything coming up that you can tell us about? Um, only thing I have coming up right now is um July twentieth. I'm gonna be out in Colleen, Texas. Okay. Um, at the Colleen Civic and um Conference Center. It's a um it's an African fest. Um so I'm going it's called Taste of Africa. So okay. um that's my first event out here. And um I haven't really planned out the rest of the season yet, man. Okay. Um, but I'm gonna do that since I I'm living out here in Texas now and that's that's close. So uh, I'm going, you know, test test the waters and see how the um the people, you know, receptive to what I'm doing now. You know what I'm saying? Since I got and plus, you know, the best thing you can do too is write, man. You you need to have a a, a plethora. You know, you need to have so many different things on your table. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like when I'm about the kids' book, I got the kids with the parents gonna come see that book. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, and then you and then you got your poetry people that's gonna come by and see that. But I pull them kids to it, man. I got candy on the table. I got they coming to this table. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I got T-shirts for the blessings off of dogs too for people. You know, so yeah, you got to have a lot of stuff on that table. The variety, and like I said, I didn't think about that. You know, because I see people all the time with their non fixtures and it's not, and then you don't know what you're going to buy. And that's yeah. another thing, another advice to give. You know, when you out there doing these shows. You know, go to go to go to on um, book festivals, but once you've been to one and it's oversaturated, don't go back. Because you know, sorry to say, black people read, but they don't have a lot of money, so it's kind of hard to if you got a hundred authors, yeah, and they walking around and they're trying to figure out which book I want to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you got to go to those and go to those places that you think people are not going to buy your book. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I was you the, never I, know. You, I, man, I went, to, I went to Tennessee, bro. I was like, man, I was I was bugging. I was like, man, there's a bunch of white people out here, man. They ain't buying my book, bro. <laughs> and it's crazy. I had a doctor come up to me, a dentist. Mm-hmm. She was addicted, bro, addicted to drugs and lost her license. Wow. And then she and I, I, she bought my book, A Brother's Testimony, and I was telling her about her God, you know, and this and this and that. So she just just talking to her, and I knew something was wrong with her. So you never know who you're going to get across to in certain things. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um. So it didn't. It didn't have nothing to do with color. That was just about something she had been through. I had been through. You know, she was going through a drug addiction. I had went through an alcohol addiction. So it was the same thing. And the losses. You know, she lost her license. Mm-hmm. To be, you know, to be a doctor. That's crazy. She went to school for that. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Wow. So, so she yeah. can't practice anymore at all. She well, she's trying, man, but you know, that addiction is 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 right at her back door, bro. Wow. You know what I mean? She's trying, you know. Uh, I haven't kept in touch with her. We we kept in touch at first, uh, for about a year or so. But yeah, it, it, it was it's rough, man. It's rough. Yeah. But it's people like this. It's, it's easy to get, you know, being a doctor, you know? Yeah. Yeah. You know? Wow. But, That's crazy. That's crazy. So um all your books are available right now. Um which which books are available and how can people get their hands on them? Well, all the books are available right now on Amazon. Um you can go to Amazon and um pull up Brother's testimony. Uh, Blessings Off of Dogs 2, um, Kings You Are Not Forgotten. Or you can just hit me up on Facebook or Instagram at um, Arthur Maurice McFadden, both um, Arthur Maurice McFadden on Instagram or what's in it. If you want a signed copy, just just inbox me and um, we can do it from there. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's what's up. So uh, any, anything you want to share with the people? Because I don't want to hold you up too long. Uh, anything you want to share with the people before we go? No, just just stay true to your pa- passion, man. You know, um, don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. You know what I'm saying? God put us all here for a purpose, and we don't know what our purposes are. 
You know, um, you you know me and you, we did music, man. Yeah, so yeah, no after, doubt. That's why I'm, after, that's, music is why I'm here. After I got out of music, I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. After I left New York, I'm like, yo, what am I going to do now? Because the only thing I knew in New York was music and film and or stuff around music. You know what I'm saying. I didn't know what I was going to do, and I, I found myself going into books. So, like I said, God has a purpose for all of us, and um, and, and just use it. You know, I mean, it might not come to them right then and there. You know what I'm saying? Keep writing down your ideas. Keep doing what you're doing, man. And then and, 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 and doors are going to open. You know what I'm saying? If that's what they want to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? God going to bless you with the doors that you want open. You know what I'm saying? Um, and, and just go for it. And don't be scared, man. You, you got to go for it. You know what I'm saying? You can't have people telling you you're not good, you're not this. Let me tell you something. I had a young girl tell me. I was never going to make it as a poet. Wow. Straight to my face. Wow. She was like, oh, your writing ain't good. Wow. But I'm not a conventional, I'm not a conventional, conventional poet. You know what I'm saying? Like, I mean, and then people got to understand poetry not supposed to rhyme. This ain't no, this is not a lyric, not lyrics. You know what I'm saying? And that's what people don't understand. They think poetry is supposed to rhyme. It's not supposed to rhyme. Now, if that's your, that's your cadence to what you do in your poetry, great. But if you just write down things, that could be poetry. Yeah. So, you know, people will say, oh, this ain't good or that ain't poetry. Nobody can tell you what you, what's poetry and what's not poetry. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then the way you do your poetry. My poetry is more street poetry. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? That people can relate to. You know, it's not a, a Maya Angelou, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, or Baldwin type of thing, you know, where you, where you got to sit there. Or, or, or Hemingway, or you got to sit there and think about what you read. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I make it easy enough for you to know what you read and then understand it. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. like I said, yo, my biggest thing that I write down when I sign my books is like, yo, um, dream big. Because dreams do come true. Wow. And that's that's a perfect message to send to young people that maybe that that are not sure and they have you know a lot of times when people write or they do they rap or they try to become an entrepreneur they don't get enough support from friends and family and stuff like that so they it's it's hard to go on your own and be like a black sheep and and do something that everybody is is saying that you're going to fail at so you know hopefully when they hear what you're telling them you know those black sheep in the family that they're trying to do something that everyone's saying that they can't do, hopefully they'll listen to what you're saying and be motivated by it. And I want people to listen to this and don't take it wrong. If you're looking for your family and friends to support you, not saying all of them, Mm -hmm. not saying all of them, so (laughs) don't take it personal. But if you're looking for your friends, the majority of your family, your friends to support you, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And I'm sure you know, everybody's yeah, yeah, always no hitting you in box, you know, telling you, yo, they want something free. Yeah, yeah. They Everybody want a book free. Everybody want this free. Send me a T-shirt. This free. Yeah. And I'm like, look, this costs money. I had to produce this. Like, yo, like, you know, see. So, um, yeah, so watch out for those people because they're going to be like, yo, you be don't give out all your books free and you ain't made no money to recoup on your books. So you negative. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't bought four hundred books, gave away three fifty, and they free, and you don't spend nine dollars per book. You're supposed to be selling for twenty dollars to make a profit, so you can re up. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You sound like the drug game right now, but um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> well, you can re up on your books, man. You know, this, yeah. it, yo, it, it's not hard, man, and it's not a hard. You know, it, it's not an easy thing. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie, you, you, you know, you got to have a little money, man. Yeah, yeah. You got to have a little money to promote yourself. I mean, social media is great, but even on social media now, for you to um, boost your stuff, it costs you money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I, I push boost all day long on my junk. And, and, you know, and Instagram and, and all that, they'll, they'll add, you know, you can put a dollar amount on what you want to do. So you're going to boost five hours a day or five hours a week, but it still costs you money to advertise. Even if you get True. somebody to push up your your followers on Instagram so you can get your numbers up. And that's another thing. That's another thing when you're trying to get your book into stores. Yeah. To, to the, to these, these main outlets. Um, yo, they want to know how many followers you got. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. They really? Wanna, 
Yeah, they want to check your, do you got an Instagram? Do you got a Facebook? How many followers you do you have? Wow. It's like because the music they, game. Well, because they, I went to Mahogany Books out in D.C. at the Harbor, man. First thing they asked me on the application, paperwork, was like, yo, how many followers you got? If you ain't got over a thousand followers, you ain't, yeah, you don't even mess with, they not even messing with you. Because they want to know that, that you got people that's, if they put it on, in their stores, that you're going to be able to push it out there to these people, push it out there to these people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it, 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 it's not easy, man. This is just as treacherous as the music. This is real Yeah, it's, it sounds like it's very similar. You know, it's very like similar. Very but um, yeah, but like I said, man, it's going to cost you a little bit of money, man. But it's nothing. If you're going to do anything for anybody, invest in yourself. Mm. That's it. Invest in yourself because you the only ones that can make your dreams come true, not nobody else. You don't stop uh-huh. looking for other people to make your dreams come true. It's not going to uh-huh. happen. Yeah, a hundred percent. And then, and then when you do find these people and they don't do you right, or you've been in a deal that's messed up, I, I think the best thing I ever did, um, I signed with a dude when we was doing when we was rapping in Queens, and I don't know if you know this brother, but he goes by the name of Sweetie G. Um, okay. He manages. He manages. Um. Um. Aaron. Um. And them from God. Okay. okay. But um. This brother was a genuine manager. He said he was gonna do some things. Didn't do it and let us out of our deal. You don't mm. find those people around. You know what nah. I'm saying? No. So they want to hold on to you. They're gonna hold on to you. You, you see yeah. people like that every day. But like I said, the best thing that you can do for yourself is to invest in you. Mm. Even if you gotta take out a loan. Hey, that's if you go take out a loan, that's you. You're invested in you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You just got to make it happen and push and push and drive and push and push. You know, it's just like rapping, man. You can't write one rhyme and put it out there and hope it's going to hit, dude. You got to keep hitting them in the head, hitting them in the head, hitting them in the head. Yeah, you know, and that's what you got to do. You got to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing. You, you know, you get you get three doors closed. Yo, you keep pushing, man. One of those doors are going to open for you. Yeah, yeah. You know, one of them doors are going to open for you. Most definitely. You, know? you got to keep just, going. And just, and just trust God, man. You know, I, yeah. I'm, you know I, I, I believe in timing, bro. Mm-hmm. I believe in timing and God's timing. You know, we, we, we're at that microwave stage now. We want everything to happen overnight. Mm-hmm. And it just don't happen, bro. It just yeah. don't happen. You know, I'm writing a book right now by my fiance, and it's called um, Love You Long Time. Um, it's crazy because after I got divorced and was married before, dude, I was like, I'm never finding love again. I'm never finding love again. And I met a, a brother at um UVA, University of Virginia, a couple back in 2012. He wrote a whole poetry book on his wife, and I'm like, dude, what kind of wife you got that you could write a whole <laughs> book about? You know what I'm saying? Like that ain't real. I don't know that world. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now I know that world since I met her. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Love you long time because, yo, she's everything I want in a person, a woman, spiritual, mentally, physically, and everything, man. So, yeah, I want, I want to put that out there to share that I, I found love. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. That, that love is real, you know, and, and it's not fake. And it, it's, it's, it, can, it can happen to somebody who doesn't believe that it is, you know, there's real love out there. You know what wow. I'm saying? Wow, that's an important message. Because okay. a lot of a lot of people gave up on love, like for real. <laughs> well, we looking for the wrong things. Yeah, we looking for the wrong things. You know, we mm. looking for the bag. We looking for this. We looking for that. You know, you you know, looking for the dude that's got the nice house. You know, the dude, the girl that got the nice car. You know, who's footing the bill? Who's doing that? Instead of everybody just coming together. Let me tell you something, and, and this is real. Now, everybody can do what they want to do, but this is for me. I know. And my fiance knows that if if it wasn't for God, we would have never met because it was a long distance thing. She was in Texas. I was in Charlotte. You know what I'm saying? But if you don't have that foundation of God in your house, some type of spirituality in your house, it's not going to work. Wow. That that yeah. has to be the head of everything. Your girl or your man can't be number one in your life. Yeah. You know, that's the misconception right there. Mm-hmm. No, God is number one. You're, you're, we're number two to each other. Yeah. So when you have that foundation of God, man, everything is going to work itself out. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. 
Yeah, man, it's just, just, it's just, yeah. But so that's that's something I'm working on right now. I'm working on that, and I'm working on a nonfiction um, called Let it, Let Us to the Mainland. It, um, and that's basically just about it's about a girl from Hawaii in prison writing letters to somebody in the states. So I'm working on that right now, nonfiction. Um, that's something new for me right now. So, but yeah, okay. I'm coming with the, I'm coming with those two. So hopefully, I don't know if it's gonna be this year, but I, I I'm putting it all in the process of that. And um, I started on the new kids book last year. So I'm just putting all the pieces to that together. Um, another thing that we and, and tell people too, if you're looking for artwork mm -hmm. and you got all these people out here doing illustrations and, and charging you a lot of money, go on Fiverr. Dude, Fiverr, Fiverr is the best. Yes, F-I-V-E-R, Fiverr. Mm -hmm. Dude, you can get you can get t-shirts done they can you can get lawyers on there to do everything you got lawyer i got i got a lawyer on there from texas to do my um to do my my paperwork on my um uh, copyright on my book on um, the title you know because i i own that title mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying to do trademark okay but you can find i found my illustrator to do the book my kids book she's wow. in Pac she's in pakistan wow never met her but I just sent her the ideas. She drew them up and we went through it and everything, man. But like I said, that's a cost effective thing too than just trying to uh, illustrate in your hometown. But you gotta just be patient with that. You know, you gotta find the right person with Fiverr because you got like five, 600, a thousand people up there doing illustrations. So you just gotta find the right one for you. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So that's another little tidbit about um, looking into things. You know what I'm saying? And like I said, on Fiverr, man, like I said, people looking for lawyers, People looking for illustrators, people looking for um, people to do T-shirts, all, all of that you can find on Fiverr cheaper than finding somebody out there in the streets. And that's a that's a good piece of information because a lot of people know about Fiverr, but they never used it before, you know, because a lot of there's a lot of scams and stuff like that. So yeah. people people are scared to, to use websites like that because they feel like they're not going to get their money's worth. So it's good that you used it. And you're telling people like, yo, I used it and there could be some scammers up there, but I used it and, and I got something done. Oh, yeah. you. I mean, I had I, I had another uh, young lady that I know that's a minister. She bought out a Christian kids book and she used the same girl from Pakistan. She just called me last week and was like, yo, bro, could you hook me up back with that girl in Pakistan? I said, what happened? She started working with another dude on Fiverr. Dude. And I mean, you, it's a waste of money, though. So make sure you don't put a lot of money out there. Yo, none of the characters or nothing look like what she wanted. Wow. So she lost money there. So you got to find out, you know, and don't, you know, get them to do what you want to do, not what they want to do. Yeah. You know, that's the point of the matter. But um, yeah, five, eight, yeah it's, like I said, it's, 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 it's less money. Um, when I did my trademark thing, yo, trademarks cost $2,000. Really? Yeah, to get your trademarks. Yeah, if dealing with a lawyer on the outside, two thousand dollars, fifteen hundred, two thousand dollars. Dude, I got the my my I did my filing, my paperwork was a hundred, whatever it was, but I paid my lawyer five hundred dollars. Mm, wow, five hundred dollars. And then he did everything. She did everything. Yep, wow. you know, she did everything. Wow, filed That's everything up. for me. I mean, and and you know, like I said, I paid her five hundred, and I paid for my filing fees and all that, but that's way less than two thousand dollars. Yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah, I mean, it's gonna Definitely. cost you some money, but yeah, that's not that two thousand twenty five hundred though. Okay. But, um, yeah, bro. That's what's up. So I I don't want to hold you up too much longer. So uh, I want you to you know give your social media so people can know where to contact you and buy your books and stuff like that. And then you know um you you're welcome to come on at any point in time, anytime you want to just come on and kick it. Anytime you have something to promote, you know what I mean? My audience is your audience, so you're always welcome to come through. If you just want to come, you, you see something crazy happening, and you just want to come talk about it, you're welcome to come talk about it. Yo, I appreciate that, bro. I definitely appreciate that. Well, people can reach me at, um, on Instagram and on um, Facebook at author Maurice McFadden. That's Maurice M A U R I C E McFadden M C F A D D E N. Um, you can catch me on those two platforms for my books. Um, but just check on, like I said, on Amazon for Blessings Off for Dogs Two, um, A Brother's Testimony, um, Kings You're Not Forgotten, 
Um, so those are my new things that's out right now. But um, yeah, man, just catch me on social media and hit me up. Um, just just inbox me about books, just information or whatever. Or even if you just, just want to talk about ideas that you have or if you need help with something, hey, I try my best to help you push you to the right people. You know, if I don't know the answers, if you're trying to write and do things like that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I've had people come at me talking about they want me to co-write with them. They want me to push their stuff. I mean, I'm not doing all that, but I can push you to those. <laughs> I can push you to those people, you know what okay. I'm saying, that do all of that stuff. But, yeah. But just hit me on Arthur Maurice McFadden. And, y'all, I appreciate the love, bro. Thank you very much. No problem. Anytime, man. So, um, we out of here. I appreciate you for calling in, man. Um, like I said, you're welcome anytime, man. We out of here. See y'all next time. Spray Radio. King, we out.